Hey rockers, welcome back to the party, the underground guitar party. Guys, I'm Rob. Today I want to ask you a real quick question. Are you ready to learn guitar? Have you been thinking about learning guitar and you want to play guitar, but you don't know where to begin? Are YouTube tutorials not really doing it for you? You need something more than how to play this song or how to play that melody or, or vice versa. Well, I'm here to share with you. Out of all the guitar courses out here, this is what I teach my students here on my own home and online. It's the Guitar Method by Hal Leonard. People have been learning to play guitar using this exact method for decades. It's been around for a while, and there's a reason it's around. This happens to be all three of the one, two, three books that are in the Guitar Method, and I'm going to be teaching the first book out of this in this series right here. No need to go and buy any kind of big courses or things like that. You can get what every music student will get if they go to Guitar Center or somewhere else to learn. This is what you're going to learn. And most uh, most teachers will, will kind of swear by this. Now, if you buy this book from me, you can get it in the Amazon links down below. I'll have it linked to the black cover books, which is just book one. You've got a $14.99 version, which has a download of audio music to go along and support the book. Or you have the book only, no music download for $9.99. It's up to you which one you get. If you don't use those links, no problem. Just go ahead and get this book wherever you can get it. Maybe your friend or buddy has one that can lend you a copy, things like that. It's going to be a lot of fun. So if you're ready, grab your guitar and I'll see you in just a minute. And welcome back. I hope you guys had a fun time grabbing your guitars. Here's mine. Yours might look different. Whatever guitar you're holding in your hand is the best guitar in the world because it's the one you're playing. Just remember that. Also, I want to say something. There's a lot of guitar snobbery out there. Don't buy into it. There are things that money can get you that a more expensive guitar will get you, but don't let a less expensive guitar keep you from learning guitar. And definitely don't let a salesperson talk you into something more expensive than what your pocketbook can handle. In this instance, what you want to do is get something good and efficient that's going to help you make music. Okay, let's talk about this guitar. Uh, we've got a couple parts to the guitar we're going to go over. Um, first of all, we're going to start at the top. We've got the headstock and our peg head. Our peg head has our tuners on it. Our tuners go through the headstock and they come around the back and they actually tune the guitar through machines. This is going to be the same whether you've got an acoustic or an electric, doesn't matter. The headstock is connected to the neck. The neck is what you hold behind. Another piece of wood, spe uh, specifically on a uh, an acoustic guitar and not on all electric guitars, will be a different piece of wood called the fingerboard. Some electric guitars have the neck and the fingerboard as the same piece of wood which is really cool think stratocaster and stuff like that but not always in any event you're going to have strings that fret over top of this through little metal bars that allow you to make notes those bars are called frets when you make a note with your hand on one of those frets that's called fretting fret fretting there you go okay so you can fret a chord you can strum a chord Okay, either way. And you can also play the chord broken. That's called an arpeggio. These terms are important because when we talk about them, we want to be on the same page. At the top of the neck, you have what's called the nut. This can be bone or plastic. It doesn't necessarily matter, but generally it designates the beginning of your scale length for the guitar, and it terminates here at the saddle. The saddle sits on top of the bridge, the bridge on top of the soundboard. What this does is the nut and the saddle determine how your guitar is going to sound, what pitch it is overall. It's concert length. The shorter the notes, usually the higher, or the shorter the strings, usually the higher the pitch. The longer the string, usually the lower the pitch. And different scale lengths, 23 and a quarter, 22, 28, things like that, inches, will determine uh, the type and size and style of the guitar. You will have a certain number of frets to the body. Generally, on an acoustic guitar, that'll be 12 to 14, and on an electric guitar, that'll be 17, something like that, uh, pretty easily before you get to the body. What happens between the string and the, or between the nut and the saddle, is vibration of the string. That gets transferred through the bridge, down the saddle, into the soundboard, and allows the soundboard to vibrate. On an acoustic guitar, this entire chamber that's made up of the fat part of the guitar, the sides, and closed by the back, create a resonant chamber that allows the guitar to make music based of, make notes and sound based off of what you're doing. On an electric guitar, you will have some resonance that comes from the body of the guitar, whether it's solid, semi-body, or semi-hollow or hollow, but the motion of the strings will be picked up by an electronic pickup or electric pickup that me measures vibrations through a magnetic field. It's really cool stuff. Um, in any event, 
those are the two different ways the sound is transferred. Now, some electric, some acoustics have electronics built into them, which with an active pickup that uses a battery and an under saddle or behind the saddle pickup to measure and feel the vibration that the strings make on the saddle. Now, that can be tuned for, from an onboard EQ and tone shaping, very similar to what you would do on an electric guitar. But in any event, that's another way that you can get an electric sound or an amplified sound out of an acoustic guitar. Whew. If that wasn't enough, there's more, but we'll share some of that for other lessons. So we're getting ready to play notes on our strings, but let's talk about what the strings are. From our lowest to our highest pitch string, we have our E, which is our sixth string, our A, which is our fifth string, D, fourth, G, third, B, second, E, high E, first. When we put those strings together and fret different places on them, we can make chords that can turn into music. That's the whole thing we're gonna be doing. Today we're focusing on the high E string, specifically open E, no fingers on the fretboard, F, which is our first finger on the first fret of the high E string, and then G, which is our first finger on the third fret of the high E string, E, F, G. Now, in the musical alphabet, just like in the written alphabet, we're going to use letters to determine what note and what pitch. Now, there are different types of notes and pitches, but generally, we're going to be talking about notes and pitches around C4 on the piano and higher, a little bit around there. Guitar is usually around four octaves, something like that, compared to a piano, which is around eight. You can get more, but what I'm saying is most people will play within about a four or five octave range on their guitar. That being said, we're talking about E, F, and G. Okay? Now, in order to play those, we want to make sure that we're not turning our guitar flat. So we don't want to look and see underneath there. And that's going to be difficult at first, but you'll get to it. You want to keep your guitar upright nice. Notice how it's upright and not slanted. If you got to slant it a little bit to look over in the beginning, that's okay. The next thing that we're going to do is make sure that we're sitting up nice and straight. We've got our shoulders that are broad. Our guitar, in this case, is sitting off to the side, just like we're kind of presenting that way so that the music can come forwards. Sometimes you'll see people move the guitar around like that. Lots of that, other than just looking cool, because it does, right? right? Um, it also allows your neck angle of the guitar and your wrist angle to line up better for playing different chords and playing different notes up and down the neck. Generally, you don't want to have a right angle. So if you want to move your hand across to the front like that to get less of a right angle, you can. I'm going to play like this to make it easier for you to see. Also, this is an easy position in the cowboy chords, the chords that don't generally use a bar, the ones that are found at the first five frets of the guitar. Cowboy chords, that's what they call them. Generally, it's easier to fret these when you're in this right angle position. And as you go up the neck, it begins easier to move your guitar into this kind of a position so that you lessen that angle. In any event, we won't be playing up the neck at all today, but now you know. Good sitting posture, and let's talk about your knee. I know you may not be able to see your knee very well or my knee very well, but notice that my, my thighs are parallel with the ground, okay? They're not sloping down. If you have your thigh sloping that the guitar is sitting on, it won't be supported and it'll droop. Lots of times people will play with a stool that they put their foot on so that it lifts the guitar up into the proper playing position. Sometimes you'll see people that cross their arms or cross their legs, I should say, in order to get the guitar into that position. For example, if I sit in a chair or any of the stools that I have around here, they're sometimes too tall for holding the guitar properly, and I'll wear a strap so the strap holds the guitar higher on my body so that I can sit in those uh, seats and play more comfortably. Today, I've chosen a low sitting chair for the very specific reason that I don't need to do anything except plant my feet solidly on the ground. I don't have any of my feet off the ground. They're completely on the ground. Allow the lower bout at the waist to fit on top of my thigh and get ready to make some music. 
So we're going to talk about these notes like we did. Moving on along, let's talk about these notes. E, open. F, first fret. G, third fret. The way we're going to play these is by using a pinching motion with our thumb and our forefinger, and we're going to be putting our finger on the first fret and the third fret. So E open, F, and G. Some of you out there have already picked up on the fact that we have two E strings, and the answer to your question is yes, this is F. Well, this is F, the other one was E. This is E, this is F, this is G also. Every note that we learn on the high E string or the low E string is equivalent to the other string. It works back and forth. Okay, now E, let's try it again. E, F, G. Now, if doing this sounds a little bit tricky, like how do I know when to change? Oh, good question. That's when that metronome comes into play. You can hear that in the background. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four. This is at 60 beats per minute, which is a very slow pace. And you might notice there's an accent on the first beat. It sounds a little different. We've got three types of notes we're gonna go over today. And those are whole note, half note, and quarter note. In a time signature like this, we are in 4-4 four, four time. That means that a quarter note gets one beat. And there are four beats in each measure. Pop quiz, how many beats do you think a whole note would get? Well, think of it as one over one. It's a fraction. So it, if a whole note gets one over one, it gets all four beats if there are four beats in a measure. Let me show you what that would look like on the open E. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. There's your whole note. Now, with my F, I'm gonna do half notes. Real quick question. You guys already know the answer, but how many beats is a half note? If you said two beats, you're right. One, two, on the F, go. One, two, two, two. One, two, two, two. I could count one, two, three, four, but I'm just counting one, two, 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 because that's the second note of the measure. Two, two, two. But you could count one, two, three, two. In any way, I'm just counting how long I've held the note right there. Okay. Last one on the G, we're going to do our whole note. Quarter note. How many beats? Did we? Yeah, you got it. We said four, two, ready, on the G. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. And there you go. Now, the reason I counted one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, I was just counting the number of measures with that up incrementing number, like one, two, three, four, then two, two, three, four, then three, two, three, four, because I had counted four measures. So that's going to bring us over here. Now that you know that, E, open E, F, first fret, G, third fret. This is easy stuff. You guys have already rocked on, so let's add it. I'm going to go over here to lesson number one. Let me move this in so I can see over top. And if you look at one, we see that we've got an E. The E is the last top step before the first staff line. We didn't talk a lot about staff lines, but that's okay. That space is E. The line at the very top is F, and the space on top of the line is G. That's what it is, and you'll pick it up a lot quicker than you think over this next couple of weeks with these lessons. So, these look like whole notes. Notice they're just 
ovals with no stem. Also, the ovals are not filled in. So they're like empty ovals, whole notes. One, two, getting ready for the E. One, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, and then E, two, three, four. Very good. Now, when we look at that, I'm gonna play it one more time for you, just to give you a little bit of a backing track, and you can loop this a little bit if you'd like. But I'm going to play the chord for C, because in the C chord I have an open E, and it's pretty. So I'm playing a complementary chord because I have the open string. Then I'm going to play F, because it's an F note, and F has a beautiful first position, F, in the barred chord for it. And then I'll play G. Same reason, G has a G in both the low E and the high E, and it sounds pretty. And that way I'll be able to play along with you and you can play the melody note while I play the chord behind you. You ready? Two, ready, go. E, two, three, four. F, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. F, two, three, four. E, two, three, four. Very good. Now, I could have played E, F, and G, but I chose to play C because I thought it sounded prettier. This is an interesting concept to share with you right now, immediately, because there are many ways to combine these notes, so they sound good. Okay, are you ready for lesson two? Let's move on to lesson two. These are half notes. Notice the half notes are designated by the oval. It's a little smaller oval now, and it's got a stem on it, but it's still open. So the oval is not filled in. And once again, we have E, E, F, F, G, 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 F, and E. And we're going to play them on half notes. One, two, ready, go. E, two, E, two, F, two, F, two, G, two, G, two, G, two, F, two, E, two, three, and end. Not bad. When you play this yourself, when you're looking in the book, like right now we're playing together, you're, you're listening and instructing, but when you're doing this by yourself, look at this, count in your head, one, two, ready, go, and then play your notes. Two, F, two, G, oh man, I messed up, don't stop. Don't ever stop, just continue. And music, that's called an accidental. And it was an accident, so just keep going. Okay? So, one more time. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. All right, so I called out some different counting there. And you can count however you would like, but in that instance, I was just counting off the measures. And I think when I got to my final G, uh, I started over after the fourth measure. One, two, three. Or in the fourth measure, it looks like. Okay. All right, moving on to lesson number three. In this instance, you're going to play the quarter notes, but I'm just going to play the whole notes behind you. So let's try this one real quick. I'll play the quarter notes with you the first time through, and then I'm going to play whole notes on the chords. But we'll do that as a second go round, like we've been doing. One, two, ready, go. This is E, 
Think about that. So notice here, as we've been building this skill, we're also adding half notes. We started with whole notes, then we went to half notes and added a whole note, then we went to quarter notes and added a half note. So on this time through, I'm going to go ahead and do just like we talked about. I'm going to play the chords, but I'm going to play the chords on the full bar, right? So I'm going to play just the chord. One, two, three, four, two, two. To play it just like that. And you guys play the half notes or the, the actual quarter notes that are there. Two, ready, go. E, two, three, four. F, two, three, four. G, two, F, two, E, two, three, four. There you go. So how did that sound to you guys? It should have been pretty nice, and I hope that it was. We're going to go ahead and close the first notes out for Lesson 3 on our very first video. If you'd like to see more, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Send a picture of me to jam at undergroundguitarparty.com of you practicing this video, and I'll be happy to put it at the end here. The next three or four lessons are going to come in. I guess we're going to, on the next time through, we're going to go through at least four through... We're probably going to do four, five, six, seven, and eight. So today's lesson, we introduced the notes on the first string, E, F, and G. We introduced the guitar. We introduced whole notes and half notes. And we played along a little bit with the metronome and some alternate voicings behind the music. Hope you guys had a great time. I had a wonderful time hanging out with you. Please like and subscribe. Remember, I'll catch you on the next time. Bye for now.